We begin the service today with we'll sing number 300, Son of My Soul. I mentioned in the beginning of the service today that we will have our Christmas singing this Wednesday night at 7.30. You're all welcome to be here and enjoy the fellowship and the song together and hopefully be able to worship in song. We, in everything that we do, we need to keep our Lord and Savior first and foremost. And let him lead, guide, and direct us. And I know that if we do those things, that we'll be okay with him. But let's put ourselves <coughs> let's put ourselves in the back and put him first in everything that we do. <coughs> let's turn this morning. Let's turn to Colossians. I'd like to read some there this morning. We'll start reading here in the third chapter of Colossians. If you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Paul was just in, encouraging these people as he wrote this letter. And I want these things to, to, for each and every one of us this morning to think about what we are reading. He says, if you then be risen with Christ, if you are have risen above Satan. 
If you have risen above the things of this world with the Spirit of God, he says, seek those things which are above. Where Christ setteth on the right hand of God. I know that we have been we have talked a lot about in the last few weeks about the carnal mind and to getting those things out of our mind and and putting the Lord first in everything. And as we read through here, I want us to just examine our own selves and see how this letter that was written there, how it would fit in our day with us. He says, set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. And again, that is where we need to be doing, where we need to have our affections today, is on the things above, on the things that Jesus Christ would have us involved in today. For you're dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. And he's not talking about dead naturally. He's talking about dead to the things of this world. That's the spiritual part, that we are dead to those things. And that is not what we are alive to anymore, but we are alive to the spiritual part, and we are seeking the things that Jesus Christ would have for us to be involved in, and that's what he was wanting to encourage these people here. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall you also appear with him in glory. Now that's speaking a lot. When he says there, he says, when Christ, who is our life, and is that in each and every one of us's heart this morning that we can truly say that today? That when Christ, who is our life, that is what is first and foremost in everything that we are involved in today. Then shall ye also appear with him in glory. And that's what it takes to be able to appear with him. To be able to appear with him at that final day and to be able to go into that glorious life of eternal life, we must put him first and foremost in all things. And that is what we live our life for, to serve him. And be constantly asking, what can we do today, Lord, so that we can encourage others? And first of all, encourage ourselves and have that light shining bright that we can encourage others with it. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. And he's saying, get control of the members of this body. Get control of this body. Just as he, spoke, he speaks in another place of how he says that I must stay under this body and bring it under subjection. That's what Paul speaks about. And that's what he's speaking about here when he says, mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. And he goes on and he talks about some of the things there that people are involved in and have been involved in all the way along, almost since the beginning of time. But he says fornication. He names out some of these things, and it is rampant throughout our lives and throughout our world today. And he says, now, mortify these things. Keep them out of your life. Don't have anything to do with it. He says fornication, uncleanliness, inordinate affection, evil compassion, uh, concupiscence and covetousness, which is idolatry. We should not be involved in any of these things, he says, and just take care of that in our lives. For which things sake, the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. And I want you to think about what he's saying there. If we aren't walking with him, if we do not have this body under control, and the only way that can be is with the Spirit of God. If we don't have that, that control, he says, for which saying's sake, the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedient, those who are disobedient to the commandments, 
to those that do not follow him, to those that are involved in the uncleanliness that he has just spoken of there. He says they're children of disobedience. And that goes for each, it doesn't matter who you are, where you go to church or whatever it might be. If we are in not walking with him in the spirit, we then will have the wrath of God come down upon us because we are walking as children of disobedience. We may have a child that you might have and he might be right there among you, right in your household. And he is your child. But if he is walking in disobedience, he should be punished. He should be brought under the obedience of the father there. If not, he would have to go away at some period in time. And that's what he's talking to us here. That we have to become obedient to the Father through the Spirit. And if not, at some time, the wrath of God then will be poured out upon all the children of disobedience. Isn't that a sad thing to think about today? And we've got that wonderful opportunity each and every one of us have to know Him. We've got the opportunity to stand with Him. We've got to, the opportunity to set our affections on the things above and get them off of the things of this earth. He says, For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience, in the which ye also walked some time when you lived in them. And I know that there is times that we have been in those, those conditions, but we can have that taken away, and we can have that for we can be forgiven for those things and then walk in the obedience of God. In the which you also walked some time when you lived in them. But now ye also put off all these. Now he, he talked about some very... We look at it, maybe people would look at it as large sins, big sins there that he talked about. But now he's talking about, he says, now, now that you have come out of that and you've received of that spirit, he says, but now you also put off all these, anger, wrath, malice, blaspheming, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to the other, seeing that you have put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Now where do we stand today? That's the question that our Lord is, is bringing these things to our attention so that we can have our own individual self examined and see where are we. He says, now we put off all these things that we would count as, as major issues in our lives. But he says, now... You've received this thing, and which you walked in some time when you lived in them. You lived in that, in that spirit, that wicked spirit that was within you, that was directing your body. But he says now that we've received that spirit of the Holy Ghost, there are other things that we need to put off. We need to do a soul searching within ourselves. And that's where he goes into the other things of anger and wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communications out of your mouth. When you see these kind of things, what kind of fruit is coming forth out of the man? Is it a fruit of righteousness? Or is it a fruit of Satan? He says that these things that come out of the man is what, was, what will defile him, and that is what he's talking about here. He says, lie not one to the other, seeing that you have put off the old man with his deeds. You've become a new man, a new woman. You've received that new spirit, that promise from, of the spirit of the Holy Ghost that he says, I'll send to you a comforter. Isn't that wonderful to think about that we can have that? And when we have put off the old man, we have received the new man, and now we can have power over all of these things that he's talking about. We can have that power. 
and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. And that's what we should be begging for each and every day is the knowledge and the strength of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to be able to overcome these things. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ in all and in all. <coughs> but Christ is all and in all. Now that, that again, there's things that I know that can be encouraging to us all. He says, where there is neither Greek or Jew, it doesn't matter who you are, he says. You're able to receive it. It doesn't matter if you came. And in those days, there was a lot of confrontation about these kind of things. Is who would be able to receive the Spirit? The Jews were the chosen people in those days, in the days before Christ. And, it, and they, were, they felt like they maybe should continue to be that way. And they, they should continue to not have dealings with other people, so to speak. And that, that they, other people would not be able to receive this. But Paul just wanted to make everybody very plain and clear that Christ Jesus came here to the earth for the sins of the whole world. It did not matter who you were. You have that opportunity. Now, whether or not you use it, that's up to you. Whether or not you are going to a place where you can get help, that's up to you. And that is where we need to all understand where we receive the help that he has to give to us all. He says, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all. That's a wonderful thing to think about. Christ is all. He is for all. And he is all with the Spirit of God. And he can be in each and every one today that desires that that wants him and ask for it to come into his, to our life. Truly desiring, having a true desire for that spirit to grow strong within us. Put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, kindness, Humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Again, he's just bringing all of these attributes of how we, if we are proclaiming to be a Christian, that we should be living our life. And I go back, I was reading, I believe it was this morning, in Luke, and how he was mentioning there what our Lord said if a brother comes and he, he sins against you and he comes and he, he asks for forgiveness seven times in a day, he says, forgive him and go on. Forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so do ye also. And I hope that everybody here has been able to receive, and I know that they can, and I, I know that there's some that have not been able to receive that and have not committed to our Lord and Savior, but there's others here that have. They've committed and they've been able to receive and know what he's talking about here. Even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. And what is that charity, friends? But that pure love, that love of Christ and God the Father above all things here on the earth. That love that will 
help us to be that love that will not just help us, it will give us the power and the understanding to be able to do what we read about in those first few verses there. Set your affection on things above, not on things of the earth. And to become, for ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall you also appear with him. And that is what that charity will bring and will give to us all. Above all these things, he says, that he is telling you that we've got to walk in. When somebody says, well, there's a lot of rules in your church or in our church. Look at what Paul was laying out here to the people in that day. This is just how that they need to live. And this is what the Lord is encouraging us to teach in our day is how that we should live in accordance with what his commandments and his words are. And above all these, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts. Let the peace of God, is it there? Rule in your hearts to the which also you're called in one body and be ye thankful. Listen at that. Let the peace of God rule in your hearts. Do we have that? Does everyone here today, are you able to have that peace? Do you feel like if, if he called for the work of his hand in you today that you would be able to just go right on into eternal life with him, with Jesus Christ? That is what this comforter will do for us. And that is where that he will let the peace of God dwell in our heart and it will be there to give us that hope and that peace. To the which also ye are called in one body. One body with Jesus Christ. One spiritual body, the church. That bride, that spiritual bride. That is the body of Christ here upon the earth. His spiritual church that we can be a part of. And that then when we receive of that, you're called in one body, in this natural body here, to be a part of that spiritual body, that spiritual church here upon the earth. And then be ye thankful for what he has done for you. Because he came here to the earth and he went through all the things that we have read and you can read about here upon the earth, on this Bible. He went through that death of hanging on that cross and poured out his life's blood so that you could have that peace in your heart today. Be ye thankful for what has taken place for us. And if we aren't careful, we will be just like a lot of the world throughout our country today and go in direct opposition to his commandments and, and try to justify things that is in direct opposition to his word here upon this, in the, uh, right out of this book. And how can we be thankful? How can then when we go against his word. How do you think that he could bless us and that he could give us that peace in our hearts if we aren't walking upright with him and willing to encourage and willing to instruct others in the right way as this Bible would spell it out to all of us. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Is it dwelling in us richly today? In all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And that is what I want us to all be able to do. Let the word of God dwell richly within you. And then that is what will direct you. 
It is His law, His rules. It is not something that man has gotten up. But let's be filled with that Spirit that He's talking about here and then that will take you away from the things of this world. It will have you to where you are, your affections then are not on the things of this world. You'll go to the places that would be pleasing to Him. You'll say the things that would be pleasing to Him. you dress in a way that would be pleasing to Him. Why? Not because somebody said to do that, but because the Spirit there is directing you to do that. That is what he's talking about here. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And any time when we get together this week, let's be sure that that is what we are doing, singing with grace in our hearts singing with power in our hearts, the power of God in our hearts. And whatsoever you do, do in word and in deed. Do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. Listen to those wonderful words of life. Whatsoever Ye do in word, and we can come out and we can talk and we can say all kind of things. But what is our deeds? Are our deeds throughout the week following the words that we would say? Do we serve him with our mouth? But our works are far from him. He is saying here, serve him with our word, with our mouth. And also let our works show what our deeds are, what our faith is, and how we trust in Him and how we love Him and how we are willing to walk with Him. Do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father by Him. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as it is fit, in the Lord. And this is again, this is just how the Lord has laid out for his family to function. It is not something that man has gotten up. It is not something to come in here and try to say that there are certain people that is greater than others and that there are people who have authority over others. That is not what he's saying. He says, wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as it is fit in the Lord. If he is walking there with the Lord, be subject to that husband. Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. It's a very strong thing for us to be that we as husbands should love our wives, to care for them, to protect them, to give all, to have all for them that they need, and not try to hide things from them, but to walk with them as a unit, remembering that we have become one. The husband and the wife are one. The wife is subject to the husband as he is the head of the home. But they should work together in everything, and it is all one. What they have is together. Be not bitter against them. Children, Obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing unto the Lord. Children, that's a very strong order that he has given there. And that starts at a very young age. It should start immediately as soon as you are able to comprehend anything. And parents should re not just request that, they should make sure that that happens in all cases. That children obey your parents in all things. For this is well pleasing unto the Lord. Now these are some of the things that Paul was bringing to all of these people's attention and how they should live their lives. And he's gone through numerous things here and now he's gone through what some of the things there of the family. 
of how that we should take care of it there. And that we as parents should require these things to be done there. And we should all, from the father, the mother, and the children, work together in the things, he says, for this is well-pleasing with the Lord. If we are not walking and living in that manner, there is something wrong. It's what he's saying. Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. Don't do anything to discourage them. But you have to require certain things in your home. Just as the Lord will do things, He is not here to discourage us. He has not written these rules, these things that He has laid out for us, how we should live our life here in this book to discourage us. He has written these things to encourage us, to show us how that if we'll do these things, we can walk with Him in His love and keep His commandments in our day. Just as we as a father in the home, he didn't do this to provoke us. We are not making rules and regulations in our homes to provoke the children. But we are doing that so that it all works as a unit in the way that it should. And we shouldn't just do things there to provoke them because God is not doing things to provoke us. He is showing the love for us. But if we get out of line, then there is something that he will chasten and rebuke us and bring us back into the way of life with him. And that's what a father should do to his child. If we go, if he gets out of line from those things, they should be chastened and rebuked and brought back into the love of the family there. Servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleasers, but in singleness of heart, fearing God. Now there was people in those days that they were servants, and they didn't have the opportunity to have the freedom that you have or the things that you have or whatever. And he was just telling them even, do you serve your master as you should, not as a man pleaser, but in singleness of heart, fearing God. You serve that master as God would show you to, be, to serve him. And whatsoever you do, do it heartily. As to the Lord and not unto man. Whatever you do, and we've talked about these things here recently. Whatever you do, do it heartily as unto the Lord, unto God. And not unto men, but do it unto him. Knowing that of the Lord, you shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for you serve the Lord Christ. And if we know that these things are of the Lord, you shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for you serve the Lord Christ. But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done. And there is no respect of persons. I want you to listen carefully to those last two verses there. We'll read the 23rd also. Whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not to men. Knowing that of the Lord, ye shall receive the reward. And what is the reward? The reward is peace here in this life. 
The word is happiness here in this life. The reward of the inheritance. And what are you inheriting? If you follow these things, if you do the things that he has told us here, and we receive the promise that he has given to us, then we've got eternal life. Is what the inheritance can be. We are inheriting the kingdom of God. We can be an heir with Jesus Christ. I want you to let that sink down in your heart, friends. That when we become a son, when we have received these things that we're talking about here, then we, we shall receive the reward of the inheritance for you serve the Lord Christ, he says, when you do this. And if we are serving him, and then we have become an heir with Jesus Christ, that then we can go. Jesus Christ is there at the right hand of God the Father today. Where do we want to be? When we leave this world, where do you want to go? Do you want to go and to be there with Jesus Christ and God the Father? Or do you want to go and to be and cast into outer darkness, into hell? Go read about the parable of the rich man and the poor man. Of how he lived sumptuously here in this life. And that can be any of us. How that we just live according to the things of this world. And that poor man, and that was the way I look at that, he was poor of the things of this world, but he was rich in the Spirit of God. And they both died. They both left this earth, just as each and every one of us will. There is none of us that is going to continue right on and on and on here. We will soon be gone off of this world into a spirit world. And then what will it be at that time? One awoke up in torment and the other woke there in Abraham's bosom in paradise and what a wonderful opportunity it is for us to know and to be a part of that today we can all each and every one of us be a part of it doesn't matter who you are as we read about a few moments ago Greek, Jew doesn't matter where you come from, what the color of your skin is, nothing. That opportunity is e of eternal life is available to us all by the love of Jesus Christ. Knowing that the Lord, that of the Lord, ye shall receive the reward of inheritance. For you serve the Lord Christ. Now that's how we receive it. Serving him. And following the things that we have just read about already here today. Reading about them. But he that doeth wrong. Now listen carefully. But he that doeth wrong. Shall receive for the wrong which he hath done. And there is no respect of persons. Again, it doesn't matter who you are, what family you came from, what country you came from. does not matter if we are not walking with him and we are not keeping his commandments and we are doing, following the wrong spirit. He says, ye shall receive for that. That inheritance, that wrong. He says, you'll receive that. And he says, it doesn't matter who you are. These are just the truths of God being laid out very plain and clear for us here today, friends. Listen to them carefully. And don't let Satan deceive you into thinking that there is some other way. 
and the thinking that there is an easier way than following his commandments? That is an easy job if we let his spirit do it. He will do it for us. He will give us the power to overcome Satan in all things. There is nothing that the power of God cannot overcome in you and in me if we will be subject to him. He says, I'll never allow anything to come upon you, but what there is a way for you to escape, to escape the damnation of hell, it is available to us, friends. Let's use it in the right and the proper way. I'm going to turn over here into the next book. Paul read, writing to another group of people. Let's read here in 1 Thessalonians. In the fourth chapter. Let's start reading a few verses here in that third chapter. We'll start reading at the 8th verse of the 3rd chapter. For now we live if you stand fast in the Lord. And he's talking about living spiritually. If we stand fast with him, if we are walking with him, if we have laid aside the things of this world. He says now, stand fast with that. For what thanks can we render to God again for you for all the joy wherewith we joy for your sakes before our God? Night and day praying exceedingly that we might see your face and might perfect that which is lacking in your faith. And friends, if that is the case with anybody here today, I want to be available and to help and to talk. Paul was just talking to these people and telling them that we joy for your sakes before God. And he says, night and day praying. And that should be our prayer. Whoever is struggling spiritually today, what can we do, Lord? How can we help them? To not be struggling, but to come to a full knowledge and understanding of your work. And this is what Paul was talking about to these people that he was praying that, that we might see your face and that we might perfect that which is lacking in your faith. That we might be able to say something, we might be able to help you with any questions that would help you be stronger in the work of the Lord. And I know that that is what our Lord is offering to each and every one of us today. Now God himself and our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ direct our way unto you. Now listen at that. Listen what Paul was saying. And I know that the same thing is available to us just as much today as it was in that day. That if we are walking with him and we are of the same spirit that Paul had in him. And I believe that that's with us today. Now God himself, our Father, and our Lord Jesus Christ direct our way unto you. And I believe this is being directed unto all of us, including myself, today by God the Father and Jesus Christ. And the Lord make you to increase and abound in love one toward another and toward all men, even as we do toward you. To the end, he may, he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before God. 
even our Father, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. Now, what was he doing here but just encouraging these people about that inheritance that he was talking about? He says, to the end, he may establish your hearts. And that's what he was talking about a few moments ago to the other people there, of how that they could be a, receive of that reward by following the Lord, by having their heart filled with that Spirit. Your heart's unblameable in holiness before God, even our Father, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. And we can rise to meet him in the air. Furthermore, then we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, that as you have received of us how you ought to walk and to please God, so you would abound more and more. Now what had Paul been talking to him about in the, in the other part of this letter? He had been laying out certain things. And he had talked to them personally. And he says, now furthermore, then we beseech you, brother. We ask you, we command you, and exhort you. We are very strongly telling you this. By the Lord Jesus that you have received of us, how you ought to walk and to please God. And I know that that is just what the Lord is doing for us in each and every Sunday, is bringing these exhortations to us of how that we ought to walk and to please God in our day. So you would abound more and more, so you would become stronger in the Spirit, so you would abound more and more in that spirit and be at one with God the Father. For you know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus. And do we all know those things today? The commandments, the words that, that our Lord and Savior has given to us of how that we should live our lives here upon the earth? what Paul was doing to these people in those days. He says, for you know what commandments we've given unto you by the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that you should abstain from fornication. Here just talking to the same things to these other people, giving them the same message. Why? Because this is the message of God. This is how he would have for his people to live. That every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. Not in the lust of concupiscence. Even as the Gentiles which know not God. Get the lust of the flesh out of your life, he says. Let the spirit be strong. Let the spirit overcome these things. And that you should abstain from all of, these, of this worldliness. That no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter. Because that the Lord is the avenger of all such. As we also have forewarned you and testified. For God hath not called us unto uncleanliness, but unto holiness. Think about that. Look at it. What did we talk about a while ago when we said that if that spirit is, brilliant, is strong within us, that it will lead us away from the uncleanliness of the things that God would have us not to be involved in? And that's what Paul was speaking of here. He says, for God hath not called us unto uncleanliness, unto the lust of the things of this world, that carnal mind. He hadn't called us unto that, but unto holiness. And that will take us away from that life. He therefore that despiseth, despiseth not man but God, who hath also given unto us his Holy Spirit. Now he's talking about, he says, he that despiseth. The messenger that brings these things to you or that despises that God has brought these things to us and 
We are, and, and we have a spirit in us that we don't want to be a part of that. We don't want to listen to it. We don't want to walk in that. He says, he that despises, despises not man. And those people that did not want to hear it in that day, it was not that they were despising Paul, but he says, but you are despising God, who hath also given unto us his Holy Spirit. It's a serious matter when we bring when we look at it in that matter, friends. But as touching brotherly love, you need not that I write unto you. For ye yourselves are taught of God to love one another. And that is where we should all be today, to love one another. And he says that you need not that I write unto you that. You should know those things, that you should love and have that love. Pure love for God the Father and His Son. And then love one another. And indeed you do it toward all the brethren which are in all Macedonia. But we beseech you, brethren, that you increase more and more. And I believe that there was people there that was doing these things. And even showing that love to other people in other areas by helping them in whatever way that they could do it. And he says that you increase more and more in that. And that you study to be quiet. And to do your own business. And to work with your own hands as we commanded you. Now listen to what he was talking about. He says in that you study to be quiet. And I believe he was talking about there, and I know he was, that not be one to go out and to just be so talkative and to be talking about other people, gossiping, all these kind of things, to not let those things be named among us, not at all, and to do your own business. Just look after self. Now, if there is an opportunity when you have self in the right condition, as he has said, when you get that beam out of your own eye and you see a brother there that needs help spiritually, go and do what you can. But be sure that you have this man cleaned up. And do your own business. Look after your own self. And to the work of your own and to work with your own hands. And in those days there were some, he said, in another place of how the, some of them didn't feel like that they needed to work. And they would just let other people take care of them. I don't believe that that's what God intended for us to do at all. I believe that he gave us the ability to go out and to do things and to work with our own hands. And we should do that to help support our own individual self and our family to the very best that we can but then if someone needs help then we can help them also by having the thing that ye may have lack of nothing that ye may walk honestly toward them that are without and that you may have lack of nothing walk honestly before all men doesn't matter who they are just treat them in the way that you would be, want to be treated yourself. Treat them in the way that the Lord would have for us to treat one another. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not as others which have no hope. Now he wanted to tell them, he wanted them to understand, and they may have asked him in another letter or something they may have asked him about these things and he says but I would not have you to be ignorant brethren and I don't want to see anybody here today be ignorant spiritually but I want you to to know and understand the truths and I know it is laid out very simple and pure if we want to hear it I would not have you to be ignorant brethren Concerning them which are asleep, and I believe he's talking about those who have died, those that are asleep in Jesus Christ, that have gone off of this world, that you saw not, even as others which have no hope. And think about that. If you had friends, you had close relatives, whatever it might be, that did not live the life that they should, 
and did not walk with Jesus, did not bring forth the fruits, and you had others there that you knew that was walking with him and was bringing forth the right and the proper fruits. He said those are the ones that have fallen asleep with Jesus. And he said that don't sorrow from them. They have just gone into a wonderful condition, into a better life. Think about that. Why would we sorrow for someone that has gotten out of this sin-cursed life and gone right into eternal life. Now I know we sorrow, we have that natural sorrow that we have lost them because we loved them and we wanted to be near them. But that spiritual part, you can rest assured and know that that, as he says here, to don't sorrow about that. He says they're asleep in Christ. But he says those that do not have hope, you can have great sorrow for that. And how terrible that that is. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. And those that God brings with him, and he's talking about coming back here to the earth. They are the ones that are saved. They are the ones that is there with him. As we talked about a while ago, we, are, we then have inherited eternal life. We can be a part of that. We have, inherit, we have inherited that and we are there with God and he will bring them back. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. And we which are alive, if, we are, if that is the case, when our Lord and Savior comes back here upon the earth, the others will be able to come also. Those that are asleep, they will come. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of an archangel. And with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Think about these things. And I know we've read, we've read this several times in the last few years maybe. But it is so encouraging. It is so much in here for us to listen to and pay close attention to. If we want to walk with him. If we want to walk close with our Lord and Savior. He says, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel. And with the trump of God and the dead, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. And won't that be a wonderful and a great sight? It will be a terrible sight for the wicked. But for the righteous, it will be a wonderful time to see the Lord descending from heaven with a great shout and the trumpet of God sounding, sounding victory when the battle is won, friends. And they used to, when they, when they went into battle in these days, they had that bugle that they used to give forth certain sounds that would tell them what to do in certain ways, when to advance, when, when to retreat, when the victory was won. And I believe that this will be that trumpet sound, that the victory is won, that great and notable sound of victory in Jesus Christ and the dead in Christ that was here upon the earth shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain, listen carefully, Alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Amen to that. That this is what our Lord is encouraging us with here today. If we want to be a part of it, a true part of it. And we want 
to be a part of his church here upon the earth. And we want to support him and his church here on the earth and not be deceived by Satan to lead us away into a counterfeit, but to walk with him. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Friends, I don't know how we could be any more comforted if we want to hear the word today. And if your conscience is pricked, if it has things stepped on your feet, still be encouraged and comforted that our Lord and Savior is there with that reached out hand to lift you up and to give you that peace and to give you that love and comfort that he has for us all. Think about Peter as they were out on the sea and the wind was blowing and they were toiling and they were trying to row to get across. The Lord had told them to go across. But they could not make it. It was hard work. But they looked and here comes Jesus Christ walking upon the sea, coming toward them. And some of them became afraid and did not know what to say because they were astonished at a man walking upon the sea. They were astonished at the power of God. And I know that sometimes we can be astonished at the power of God and how boldly He can come out in His Word. But Peter looked upon him and they said, It's the Lord. And I believe that he was elated to see the Lord coming. I believe he was excited about the Lord coming to where they were. Are we excited about it today, about Him being within us? Are we excited about Him being available to us? And Peter said, Lord, if it be you, let me come and walk on the water and meet you. And the Lord said, come, Peter. And that's what He'll do with us. A miraculous thing to come unto Him. We think about that, what a miraculous thing it was for someone to walk upon the water. It's impossible for man. It's impossible for you or me to please our Lord and Savior by our works. It's impossible for us to save ourselves. But I know that we can see Jesus afar off. We can see Him on that tree. We can see Him there at the right hand of God the Father. If you want to. And we can see and recognize the power that he has. And Peter stepped out of the boat and he started going. But the waves became, the wind was blowing and it was boisterous. And all of a sudden he became afraid that he might sink. He had forgotten about putting his faith and his trust in Jesus Christ. He was there walking on the water. Put our faith in Him. Ask, yes, when we see Him there, ask for Him that we might come to Him and that we might be a part of Him, of His spiritual church here upon the earth. We might become one body with Him. And don't be afraid at whatever comes at us. But if we fall, if we falter, Peter became afraid and he started to sink. He started to drown. And he cried out to the Lord, Save me! And that's what we must do today. Each and every one of us. Save me, Lord! And the Lord reached out His hand and lifted him up. And I believe He said something to the effect of, O oh, ye of little faith, Be strong in the faith, friends. Be strong in the power of God. 
Don't let Satan get you down. If he has you down, do as we just said. Cry out to the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Save me, Lord. And use that power to rise up. Take that key of faith and unlock that doubting castle and go on that straight and that narrow road. That straight and that narrow road that leads to that narrow gate that leads to eternal life. And don't let Satan deceive you onto that broad road that leads to that broad gate that leads to destruction. And he said many there would be that would go on that road. We have to pull away from the crowd. We have to pull away from the world. And walk with Jesus Christ as we have talked about how Paul has encouraged others in his day. Different groups to walk with Jesus Christ. And lay aside the things of this world. And I want us to all to think these things and to realize that. And as we are entering into this closer into the Christmas season. To let's remember what Christmas is about. It's not about all the celebrations that the world does. It's about the birth of God here in flesh. So that you and I can have eternal life. That we can have that love for Him. Friends, submit. To Jesus, not to man, but submit to Jesus. Pray without ceasing. Pray for one another. Pray for me that I will walk with the Lord and be able to give his message. So that we can all have eternal life and have that inheritance with Jesus Christ. And I know that I cannot take you there. All I can do is encourage you. I can give you the message from our Lord. But He is the one. I can water, I can plant. But Jesus Christ and God the Father who will give the increase it all comes from God that increase through Jesus Christ that might lift you up unto eternal life that you might be able to rise to meet him in the air to ever be with the Lord amen comfort one another with these words, friends, the opportunity is ours today. Use it so that you can have eternal life. We'll sing number 254, Silent Night, Holy Night. And there may be someone that might would like to make that commitment by coming forward as we sing number 200. And fifty four. <laughs>
all is calm and all is bright to those that have accepted him. <coughs> Heavenly host, sing hallelujah. Are we singing that in our heart today? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And then he says, Sing hallelujah from thy holy face with the dawn of redeeming grace. And that dawn of redeeming grace came when our Lord was born and then when he was crucified and when he was resurrected back to life. Jesus, Lord at thy birth. Jesus, Lord. Is he your Lord? Is he our master? The birth of him upon the earth brought forth that saving grace. When it was finished, when his life and when the redemption of man was finished and it all started at the birth, then his ministry here upon the earth then his crucifixion, and then the great resurrection back to life. It is finished now. The price is paid. We have all have the opportunity. I beg that you take the words that have been given to us today, take them to your heart, and let the Lord give you the understanding throughout the week let us pray to God the Father through Jesus Christ our Lord thank you for all that you've done for us thank you for the wonderful words of life that we have been able to discuss today and I hope and I beg that we will be able to grow stronger and we will be able to grow, grow closer to you that we might then be able to resist Satan in everything and be able to receive of that inheritance that you have promised to all that obey you and keep your words. And let us build our house, our spiritual house, upon that solid rock of Jesus Christ. Be with us in the upcoming days that your will be done in us and you show us what you'd have for us to do with the things that you have given to us and you've entrusted into our hands. Thank you, Jesus. We ask in your name. Amen.